In this video, we are going to discuss about Git objects. In Git, we have three important objects: a blob object, a tree object, and a commit object. So, before explaining about these three objects, let us try to understand how Git stores the files. Git is a content addressable file system, so it stores the content in terms of binary objects. So, here blob means binary loss object. That means whatever files we store in Git, they will be stored as a blob object. So basically, it contains the checksum of the file content. So before discussing about tree and commit objects, let us go through this blob object by creating some example files. So here I have a testing directory. I will initialize a git repository here using git init command. So now we have an empty git repository here. So we can verify the content of this directory. So here a dot git directory is created. So which indicates this testing directory is a git repository. So this dot git directory contains all the important information about the git repository. So if you go inside this, so here we have multiple directories, and in this we also see object directory, which contains the actual objects which will be stored in Git. So if you go inside objects, so as of now we don't have any objects. So let us go back to the testing directory. So now I will try to create two files and add them to Git repository. So now we have created two files here. So now let us add these two files to the Git repository. I will use git add command. So I am giving all option here to add all these files. So now these two files are added. Now let us go to the Git objects directory. So here we can see there are two directories which are created corresponding to test one and test two files. So let us go to the v4. So here we can see a new file with 38 characters. So basically, when we store a file, for example, test one dot txt, so it will be stored as a checksum in the object directory. That checksum will be having 40 characters. Out of 40 characters, the first two character will be stored as a directory. And the remaining 38 characters will be stored as a file. Similarly, for the second file also, a new checksum is created in the objects directory. We can verify the contents of these blob objects using git cat file command. So let us do that. So here I want to check the content of this blob object. So here I am using git cat file. So for printing the content, we have to give hyphen p option. So here we need to provide the directory which is b4. Then we can enter some of the characters or all the 38 characters of this file. So let me copy some of the characters here. So now we can see the content is test1 content, which is the content of the test1 file. So in addition to the content, we can also verify what is the type of this object. So here instead of B option, we have to provide T option. So we can see that the type is a blob object. That means our file content is stored as a blob object in Git repository. So now we have seen how two files are stored as blob objects in the Git repository. For example, if we want to create a new file with the same content as some other files, then the new blob object will not be created. So that means it will use the existing blob object. So let us see that. So let us go to the testing directory. So here we have two files. So now let us create a third file test3.txt with the same content as test1.txt. That means I will copy the test1.txt to test3.txt. So now we have three files. Let us add this third file to the index. So now the third file is added. So let us go to the objects directory. Now we can see that a new blob object is not created because Git stores the file contents as objects. So it will not create different objects for the same content. That is why for the test3.txt, a new object is not created. So it will use the existing blob object. So now we have seen how the file contents are stored as blob objects. So but here we do not see any file names. So how Git tracks these file names corresponding to these blob objects? So now the tree object comes into picture. So the tree object references the blobs with file names and also it references the subtrees if any. So let us see this. So let me go back to testing directory.
So now we have added the files to the git index. The tree objects will be created when we commit these files to the git repository. So let us commit now. So all the three files are added. So let us verify the contents. So here we have two new directories. So this directory corresponding to the tree object and this directory corresponding to the commit object. So I will discuss about commit object very shortly. Let us go into this tree object. So let us verify the type and content of this hash. So for type I will give hyphen t option. Then we have to give the first two characters of the directory and some of the characters of this file. So now we can see the type is a tree object. So let us see the content of this object. So I am giving p option here. So now we can see there are three entries referenced by this tree object. So each entry corresponding to a blob and corresponding file name. Similarly for other two files as well. Here we can also see that test1 and test3 files are using the same blob object. So let us go back to the testing directory. So here I will create a subdirectory. So in this subdirectory I will create a new file. So let us go back and also I will modify this test1.txt content. So now here we have done two changes. One is we have modified the existing files and also we have created a subdirectory test directory and in that we have created a new file test4.txt. So let us add these changes to the index. So now let us go into the object directory. So now we have two more directories created. Let us verify the content and type of these hash files. Let me go into this directory. So the first one is a blob object. So let us verify the content. So this has printed modified test one. So that means when we change the file content, instead of changing the existing object, a new object will be created. And also let us verify the type and content of D2. So this is also a blob object and let us print the content. So this is the test for. That means this is the blob object corresponding to a new file in the subdirectory. So let us go back to the testing directory. So now let us commit the file changes so that we can see new tree and commit objects. So let us go back to the objects. So here we can see there are three new objects are created. So let us verify them. So now let us verify the content of this 92. Let us go inside it. Let us check the type and content. Here this is a tree object. Let us verify the content of this. So this is the tree object corresponding to the test4.txt. So now let us check the 8f and 6e. So now let us go to 8f object. So this 8f is a tree object. Let us verify the content. So this tree object contains the blob entries for test1, test2 and test3 and also it contains the entry for the subtree. So which is our 92 here. So this subtree object which in turn contains the blob entry for test4.txt. So this way tree objects references the blob entries for each of the files and also they contain the references for corresponding subtrees as well. So now we have seen about blob and tree objects. We also have commit objects. When we commit the files to the repository, it creates commit objects. So these commit objects contains the reference to tree objects and also they contains the reference to the parent commit. So here 68 is corresponding to the latest commit object. So let us go to 68 here. So let us verify the type and content of this commit object. So this is a commit object. 
let us verify the content of it. So now this commit object contains the reference to the latest tree object and also it contains the reference to the previous parent commit. So this commit we have already seen earlier. So this is the object corresponding to previous commit. So in addition to the tree and parent objects, it also contains the information about the author and committer details. So these commit object will point to the top level tree at the point of time and also it points to the parent commit as well. So these commit objects are used to track the changes in different files at different points of time. So let us go back to the testing directory. History of what are all the changes using git log command. So here we can see there are two commits. So this is the latest commit and this is the first commit. So we can see the first commit details as well. So the first commit is pointing to the first three object which contains all the three test files, test1, test2 and test3. So in this way the commit objects are used to track what are all the changes that occurred in files at different timelines. So in this video we have seen three types of objects, blob object, tree object and commit object. I hope this video helps. If you like the video, please like, share and subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching.